Hey everybody, it's Kate Richberg and it is episode four of our Ladder Bracelet Deep Dive Masterclass. Great to see you all. I had to restart my equipment yet again today, but I can't blame it on the weather because it is a beautiful day here today. Let me take a bracing drink of my tiny coffee. And uh, let's get down to it. Uh, we did also herd uh, the cats in, so I don't think Alfred's on Neighborhood Watch, but if he is and we hear some business going on outside, just ignore it. Chris is on it. So anyway, yes, we are on number four today. I know, Don, it's flashing by for sure. Um we are going to talk about measuring, right? Um, adding length, how to get the perfect measurement, lining up or not lining up transition points, what to use for transition points. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to get into. Um, before I go any further, though, I have a special, you can see it's scrolling right here down the bottom of the screen. I've got a special <clears throat> viewer only discount for you folks today only. So today we're live April 3rd, 2024. Um, I put metal beads on sale today for our viewers. Uh, let me go ahead and put the banner up. Um, Tonight, just as a thank you, my friends, for being part of our live community, it's the masterclass discount today, Metal Beads 30, and you're going to get 30% off all Metal Beads in stock. It's not um, combinable with any other discounts, but you're going to see a lot of Metal Beads in the pieces that I share with you today. And so I thought um, sharing uh, just a nice hefty discount for you folks who are just our viewers. It's not anywhere else on the web or in our newsletter. It's just for you folks who are watching me live and on replay today on the 3rd. The coupon does expire tonight at midnight Pacific time. It actually expires 1230, just in case you forget, gives you a little bit of extra time. Um, but it's good today only in stock merchandise only. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for uh, your support for sure. I see in the chat, there's a lot of chat about the final four, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, great to know. Um, thank you, Don. Yes. People who can use this class and Kim Crawford saying, always love the revisit. Um, always walking away with something new. Thank you so much for that. And Donna says, this is the most important part of making rasp wrap bracelets. Um, and she's having a lot of trouble with this process. Well, don't worry. I am going to share everything I know today and hopefully it'll streamline it. Uh, you can find all of these masterclass uh, series, both this one and the one I did previously. Um, they live on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can jump over to our YouTube, give that a like, a follow, a subscribe, but there are playlists for the master classes that link. The link is also, if you go into masterclass on our website on beadshop.com, you'll see them there. Um, and they're all uh, hyperlinked. So you can go right to the link. Also, uh, our Ellen is doing a great job of, I'm just grabbing my things here to clean my glasses. Wouldn't be a broadcast if I'm not cleaning my glasses. Um, Ellen is doing the timestamps on those so you can fast forward to all the info you want and you don't have to sit through all of this chit chat at the beginning. Um, and if you have any questions, hit us up at info at beadshop.com. And if you make anything, uh, make our projects, use our products, give us that tag at beadshop.com so we can share it on our socials. Okay. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Let me hide that. Let me just put this banner up one more time so it's not on the ticker. And I'll flash this again a little bit later in the broadcast. It's also uh, the first comment uh, I put on all of the socials. So you can find it, enter code metalbeads30 at checkout, save 30% off all metal beads until midnight to 
night. All right. I'll get back to that in a moment. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, okay. Great. Okay. Let me add my, my demo. Sherry, this is a great piece of advice. And it's one of the ones you kind of read my mind on this. If I mess up on length on laddering, I just keep going and make another wrap. 100%. That is a great way to do it for sure. Um, I'm going to start, let me see if I can get the right camera where I want it to be. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to share with you, first and foremost, we're going to make a little measuring uh, device. Janice and I have done this before, right here, uh, using these manila folders. We're going to do this again for you um, because it's a really handy tool to have. I have not, when we moved our office to our, uh, right here back to Fresno, I I had a measuring device that I used, my, my wrist um, mandrel sort of that I made for ladders, for laddering, and I can't find it anywhere. So I am going to make another one. You may have made one with us so many years ago that Janice and I uh, made this, but I'm going to show you how to do it again. So you can see here, I have um, a manila folder and I'm going to actually cut it <clears throat> down uh, like this. I'm going to cut this tab off. And I love how you folks are dropping the comments, your comments about your measuring tips. Keep them coming. Um, I love it. Uh, Cindy says, that's why we start with too much leather. You never know where it's going. Perfect. And uh, there's another one here. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time I did that or figuring out how to add chain. Carrie, that's exactly right. Make it adjustable to add chain for sure. Those are great. These are terrific tips that are coming. So here I've got this manila folder. I cut off the top here and I'm going to cut this bottom off just to make it kind of even like this. And we're going to go ahead. I'm going to measure the length of this manila folder just to let you know. Let me move this way up. My desk is totally messy, so you'll have to forgive me. Let me get my, my measuring tape here. And this piece of manila folder, or get any kind of cardboard reused, that's about 15 inches by about 12 inches here, right? So I'm going to roll this manila folder um, to fit my wrist. So let's put this aside for a second. <clears throat> Pardon me. And let me get a little closer here with this. Do you like the little box, Janice? I thought that this would be good to chat with people uh, in the moment, and then I'll take it down. Um, I've done this before. It's just now that it's just me, uh, it looks kind of fancy. Um, anyways. Let me get this dropped it. Uh, here's my tape measure. And I'm going to measure my wrist here. Right here. So kind of a tight fit on my wrist. So I get the actual size of my wrist, which is about six and a half inches. Okay, like so. So my rule of thumb, or I should say maybe rule of index finger, is when I place a finger underneath or my finger underneath the um, tape measure, it pulls it out to about seven inches. And that's about the length that I like my piece to be. But I'm going to start by making my wrist, my mandrel. Let me, that's upside down. So let me turn it around. Um, I'm going to make this little measuring device. I'm going to make it six and a half inches. Okay. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Let me get rid of my little picture here. Uh, go back to just this. There we are. Okay. And 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to roll this, the 12 inch side. I'm going to roll it up, roll it up, roll it up. Like so. And I want to get it nice and round. And I'm going to clip it with my clamper just so, and I'm just guessing about this. I need to adjust it because I want this roll right here to equal my wrist circumference. Okay, so let me go around. This was a little bit big, so let me tighten it up. I'm gonna roll it a little bit tighter and then I can open it up a little bit easier. And again, this is just manila folder. I make it nice and heavy so it's pretty sturdy, right? Now let's measure it again. I want it to kind of unfurl. See that, how I'm kind of unfurling it at about, there's six and a half right here. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to, Clip it. Then I'm going to measure it again. And this was a Janice idea. JP has this. Um, this is something I learned from Janice. And I'll tell you, it's come in so handy to measure. And I really missed having one for my wrist. Okay, this is about, you have to kind of keep measuring it to make sure it's right. I'm going to clip it again and clip it again. Then we're going to tape it down. Let's measure once again. Yep, that looks good. Six and a half. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, because we want to, um, we want to tape down this, like, opening right here okay so what i'm going to do let me lift this up a little bit more here <clears throat> and i'm going to get some uh, packing tape and i'm just going to start in the center right here i'm using the packing tape because it's nice and wide and it's really super sticky right um, oh, I love it, you folks like this idea. Dawn says this idea is the greatest. And Margaret is saying it's as good as the toothpick measuring tool for clasps. Yep, we've got that tip from Michelle. And we've got this tip from Janice. Carrie says, thank you, JP. This makes so much sense. I was thinking of using a bracelet display thing I have, but it's obviously not adjustable. Yeah, so you can make one of these for every wrist size, right? And it costs no money unless you don't have any manila folders or you can repurpose like an old cereal box or anything. You know, we get so much heavy cardboard and stuff. Just repurpose. Like remember when I was in Tucson and Christine made that little Ritz cracker background? I needed a white background, right? So here we go, this here. And then we're going to tape this side up here. Yes, this is all Janice. You know, I may be teaching the master class, my friends, but Janice is the um, the original, the OG wrap bracelet maker in this in this hood. So we were talking about it the other day. We were talking about some wrap bracelets and stuff <laughs> um, that. Uh, you know, that we've made and we were talking about this master class and stuff. I'm going to trim this up just a little bit. Um, and Janice was saying about how she's not sure if her design has finally caught up with the trend or if the trend uh, has finally caught up with her designs. So especially like her simple wraps. And I'm going to talk about her last simple one that she made. Um, we're going to talk about that one as well. So um, I just wanted to trim this edge down here like this. And so now we're all set. So Carrie, great tip here. 12 by 12 cardstock. If you scrapbook, it's a great idea. 
what I'm looking for, and it's not particularly beautiful on the ends, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's nice and heavy, so it's a nice, so it won't crush down, right? And we've taped this all the way across. I have a little bit of a tape bubble here, but it's not the end of the world. It's not going to make any difference. And I'm going to write on this, okay? I'm going to show you another bonus tip. Oh, Janice, you are, we just bow at your altar. You're the, you're the OG on this. So it is true. Um, <clears throat> Carrie, that we are going to use this. You're reading my mind. You can also see where each wrap is going to meet. So not to be too repetitive, a hundred percent. That's where it's, that's where we're going with this. Um, Shelly, this is a fantastic question. Uh, do we sell a simple wrap bracelet kit for a beginner just starting to make a wrap bracelet? You know what? I would recommend go right over to the website, beadshop.com, go under projects, go under wrap bracelets, start my friend under tricks to laddering, um, or any of the kind of simple wraps that you see, it'll all be, um, laid out for you with a project map. Um, Janice's sequel wrap is right here. <clears throat> That's a great beginner super easy. Kate's favorite is also a super easy one. OG is the, the original OG. It's actually the original gangsta <laughs> and that's Janice. She's the OG, the original for sure. Um, Dawn, you're also men mentioning that our alley is also a great inspiration. 100%. I'm going to share with you uh, a couple more resources that are on our website um, that Allie has put together that you really can't do without. Um, Coral, I'll tell you the toothpick trick. Um, I'll show you. It's from our buddy, uh, Michelle. Let me put this down. I love these master classes because, um, you folks just are so chatty and so clever. Our Michelle says, um, Pringles will work for larger wrists. Plus you get a built-in uh, snack <coughs> or a stacked snack for sure. That's hilarious, Michelle. And Christy's saying, I love Janice's design. I'm pr slowly printing just about everything from the website and I'm making my own bead shop masterclass. What a great, uh, what a great idea. So I'm going to write on here. So I know it's mine. I'm going to say it's Kate. I'm going to say it's six and one half inches, uh, just so I know it's mine. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Uh, let me show you a couple of bonus tips. If I had someone to do graphics for me, we'd have a graphic that came in and said, master bonus tips or whatever. Let me show you that. Um, our buddy Michelle showed us this and I happen to have a clasp right here. This is the measuring. And I'll show it again when we do closures. We've got closures for wrap bracelets coming up. I'm just going to break this toothpick so it's nice and flat and even like this. And when you want to measure how much leather is going into your clasp right here, you just come in, you make a mark right here like so. Then when you line it up against your bracelet, let me get in a little bit tighter. <clears throat> right there, like the one that I did. This is from Free Tip Friday. I'm wearing quite a stack today. Let me see if I can take it off. Let me put that pen down. You can see if I were measuring how much leather I needed to go in to this clasp. I just simply put that in, do my measurement, and then this is the amount of leather that overlaps on the end, right, to go inside that clasp. So a big thank you to Michelle for that. Um, I completed this one. A lot of you grabbed these desert slices that I made, uh, that I got in um, for a special flash sale uh, last week. Um, I'm going to do another project kind of like this that talks about this. Um, 
the stitching and stuff on the leather. But watch Friday's show <clears throat> last Friday, uh, last free tip Friday. And I, I talk about measuring and doing that kind of stuff with this flat. So let me put this back on with my wrist stack right here. Um, I'm really liking my wrist today. Uh, okay, so that's that. Let me show you one more bonus tip. And this is a bonus tip from Janice right here. Uh, I really like it. And yes, Jennifer, it's last Friday's free tip Friday. Uh, we've sold out, I think, of these desert slices, but you can use any kind of flat thing like this to sub, but it's all there with this 20 millimeter leather that's here. Uh, let me show you another trick with the manila folder from Janice. This is also a good way to start laying out your wrap bracelets. I'm going to cut up another manila folder. Oh uh, yeah, that was definitely a design on the fly for sure. Um, it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun to do. I'll tell you. So let me cut this. This is about seven. Let me measure what I've got here. This is also going to help us line stuff up. This is about nine inches across, which is good. Um, what I'm going to do, I actually want to, I'm going to cut away this little edge right here. So it's going to make it about eight inches. I'm going to mark this. Bear with me here just a second while I do this. It's not a very interesting photo that's on there now, but this is a little bit better. Uh, let me get a, 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 um, a ruler <clears throat> and I'm going to get a pen. And usually my wrap bracelets are going to go from what we call door to door about seven inches. Okay. So I'm going to mark off a couple of lengths here. I'm going to do it a little bit higher. I love to repurpose. So all the way across here, my friends, this is eight inches. Whoops, this pen certainly didn't work very well. Let me get another one. That one goes straight into the round file. Let me try this again. Going across here. This one is eight inches. Okay, can you see that? This one below it will be seven and a half. And this one below that will be seven. Okay. So <clears throat> that's eight. This is seven and one half. And that's seven. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to accordion this. And I'm not sure, I'm going to start it here. I'm not quite sure how I want to accordion it yet. Oh, and look, see, this is kind of, that's a little crookedy. Let me, but these edges are kind of straight, so it's all right. Let me, um, if I'd used a paper cutter, let me just neaten this up just a touch. I've got a paper cutter sitting over there. God forbid I cut a straight line, but that's a little bit better. Okay. So I'm going to make just like we did, you know, you make a little fan, right? Like this. Whoops. My tape measure is falling off and falling off my neck. You want to make these about the same width. Okay like that. <clears throat> and like this. Okay. So what we have is, see how I've got this little kind of bead liner upper? <laughs> That's not really a word, but right. So Janice also taught me this trick. I added the measurements here 
So see, I've got three little troughs, one, two, and three. And see, I know that if I line them up and I could come in, I could mark these all the way down if I wanted to. Let me just do that. That might be a good addition. Unfold it. Bring it all the way down after you've folded it. So that's my seven inch line. This is my seven and a half inch line. And I know if I go all the way to the end, that's eight inches. Okay, so let me fold this back up. You can use a bone folder or something fancy, or you could make this out of fancy cardstock if you wanted to make it look pretty. But can you see what I've done here is now when I lay out my pieces, especially for wraps or any kind of bracelet, seven inches is right here. This is the seven. This is the seven and a half. Okay. Okay. So it just gives you a nice little way to lay out your beads. Okay. So if like, let's say, uh, let me get my metal beads or even let me get a clasp even. Yeah. Time to screenshot this. Yes. Hashtag screenshot. Let's say that I were just stringing anything, right? I'll throw like this barrel clasp. See how I can line it up with the seven and a half inch right here. So then I know that the rest of this will be seven. Okay. Or if I'm doing something like that long um, clasp like this, right? Looks good, right? And so I know I want to fill it up here. If I'm doing wrap bracelets and I have the metal beads like transition beads, okay, the transition beads, meaning it's going from one to another and we need a little, you know, a little focal in there somewhere. I'm going to show you how that looks on regular bracelets, but let me get some of these focals here out for you. Um, here we go. Janice is also saying we do carry the bracelet board, which is great. Um, they're round like that. It looks fantastic. I love, now you can mark this however you want. You could also mark your center point down here. Okay. Um, and this accordion was really helpful, um, when Janice first showed it to me. So you can, trick this out however you like, right? Like we could go down the center, mark a center line so you know where you're putting your center here. Let's get like a couple of these metal, these sliders that are also on sale today, right? So if I know that I don't want my slider beads, whatever it is that I'm using, if I don't want them to line up, I could just put them wherever I wanted in my design. There we go. I like a little, and you can make your accordion as long as your wrap. Like if you did a five wrap, this would be perfect for a three wrap because there's three. You can make one with five or whatever. There's that little, this one doesn't want to stay up. There we go. Like that. Well, come on. You know what I'm saying? These little skinny ones don't, don't like to sit, but there we are. Close enough. Anyway, you can put those there. You can put like focal beads. Like if you were going to do like with Drea has done, she sometimes uses, uh, we have a project on it where we start from a piece like this, right? And then we go out. Um, so you can line it all up that way. That way, you know that these aren't going to line up really on your wrist. Okay, does that make sense? So now that you've got this, let me kind of jump backwards um, and talk to, and let's look at some samples that have some different transitional pieces in. Here are these two. Look at those, these little double 
um, rings, these rings of midnight, they're called like this. Um, but we have them in gold and in silver and stuff. You can kind of put those in there so you know where they're going. Okay. So, uh, yes, you could use different color inks, right? So it's not all black. So you could do red, blue, whatever, but I would personalize this. Um, however it works for you, right? It's only the cost of one manila folder. I'm pretty stoked about, about this and the addition of the, um, of the sizes here. So let's take a look. Um, oh, Don, I'm so glad you really think this might help you. Yay. I'm so glad. Right. Um, and yeah, the center, let's do a center line just for fun here. Let's trick this out just a little bit more because I'm going to use this to kind of lay it out too. So if this is my seven, seven and a half is my, um, is my preferred. So that would be three, uh, three and three quarters, I think, right? Seven and a half, half of seven is three and a half, half of half is quarter. So I think that goes right here is my center line. Or you could also do something kind of sneaky if you wanted to. I do this a lot is when, when I feel like my math skills aren't all the way across. So here's my seven and a half, and I'm going to fold that in half using my tape measure. And then I can double check my math that yes, three and three quarters. Yep. Perfect. So I'm going to go down and yeah, Margaret, we're going to talk about this too, because we're going to talk about single wraps. We're going to talk about multiple wraps, but that's a really great observation. The measurement does change as the piece goes up your wrist as well as how wide, um, your bracelet is, etc. So we're going to talk about that too. So here's my middle mark. This is my halfway point for seven and a half. So I'm going to do this seven and a half, uh, halfway, then seven, this would be three and a half. So you can do that. I'm not to make it confusing, but I'm just going to keep that center line for me. Okay. Whoops. Also out of, uh, out of focus here. Bear with me here just a second. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Um, Janice has another good, uh, tip here. Janice's wrist is closer to six. When she does a, does a five wrap, the total length is usually 35 inches, seven inches per wrap. It's about an inch smaller if the beads are thin. Um, this is also true. It would be fantastic for your traveling with a project and can't take a larger um, design board, right? So this is a good, as I say, this is a good starting point. Let's start taking a look at some of the samples and let's measure them out. Um, and let's talk about sizing because it is true that um, if you use beads that are thicker, it will um, uh, it will affect the length that you need to make it. And um, remember to try your piece on a lot. That is also true. I love all these tips, everybody. Okay, one last screenshot for this all. I'm going to set this aside. Let's look at some samples. Uh, here's my design board. It is also, let me, uh, let me de-lint it. Can you see all that lint? Now you can see all the lint on the board underneath. <laughs> so I don't know if that makes it look any better or not, but here we go. Okay. Um, I'm just going to start pulling. I've got a giant, um, tub of wrap bracelets here. So I thought I would just pull some out. Some are new, some are old. 
some we still have the prod the the beads for some we don't um so just go with me on this this is kind of a deep dive into archive let me start with something that's pretty simple and straightforward okay this is done simply with six ops. I think this is from the His Hers BFF series. Let me pull this a little bit out, just a little bit so you can see it. It is Kim Crawford. It is well loved for sure. Let me measure this one um, in length. And whoever was asking for a great beginner starting piece, this is done with six aught Miyuki's and uh, six aught metal beads here, and it just goes in and out. There isn't really a quote unquote transition um, here. Uh, it just kind of undulates in and out. To clarify, let me show you when I'm talking about transitions in wrap bracelets. Let me put this one here. I'm talking about either a bead like this. Oh, pardon me. That snuck up on me. I couldn't even mute. <laughs> pardon me. Pardon me. Sorry about that. Um, but it's either a bead like that that marks the transition from one style of wrap, one technique wrap to the other. In this case, it's that pony bead that we use. There's another one here. So when I say transition, it can also mean some macrame like this with our beads that unfortunately we no longer carry. Um, it was a Tierra Cast product, the quote unquote transition bead. But we've got some new ones that are coming. Janice has a new um, uh metal cube that is just sublime that I think you're going to love. A transition can also mean something like when Drea did this piece here. She actually started and stopped like this. Um, so it goes, you know, it's a disc or something like that. Okay. So that's, so when I say transition, that's what I mean. Okay, Darlene, I am so glad this is a good uh, tip for you. Making a measuring tool and putting names on it for your daughter and daughter-in-law so you have a built-in wrist for them. That's great. Perfect. I love it. So uh, let me, while I have a banner up, don't forget, my friends, you can use coupon code METALBEADS30. All metal beads on sale at beadshop.com today only, and it's only for viewers. Um, and it expires tonight at midnight, April 3rd, 2024. So let's get back to this one here. Okay. This is a super simple, this is a two wrap. Okay. I believe his, hers, BFF are usually two wrap bracelets. This one was not made for me, but let me see if it fits my wrist. So a simple, very easy way to get started with these. And you can see this one's just going to be a touch. See this one? It's just, it's a touch tight for me. I can't really get my fingertip underneath there. So I would make this, if this were for me, I would make it about a half an inch longer. So let's check and measure the size, right? And see uh, how this is. Um, Curtis Rock, if someone is really good at a 3D printer and makes this measurement chart and makes it open source, I have a neighbor who has a 3D printer, let me know. Also, a lot of your public libraries have a 3D printer that you can use. Um, I am so not good with 3D printing or, or creating the CAD for that. But if someone does, only caveat is you have to give it away. We're not going to sell it. And you have to let me know. You have to give me one. Okay. Or at least give me the code so I can have my neighbor print me one. It's a great idea. Uh, okay. So let's do a length. Let's do a measurement on this. Okay. 
FYI, two millimeter cord, I believe. Let me let me not be lying to you. Um, 3D printing is something that I've always wanted to get into. I, I lied to you. It's 1.6 millimeter, right? <laughs> yes, and you too, right, Curtis? It was your idea, right? You and I need to get one, right? We need the source code. Um, if anyone is into it, um, I wonder if I could talk to my neighbor. Maybe. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Maybe. Um, so let's take a look at the links. So again, this was a little short for me. So yeah, door to door. So yep, what did I say? It comes out where the button hits to the middle of that loop. It's 13 and a half inches. An inch longer and a half an inch to an inch and half an inch longer would make it 14 inches. And that would probably be exactly what I needed. Right. So, um, and again, since this is a double wrap, it doesn't take up that much real estate on my wrist. So probably 14 inches for me would have been about exactly right. Okay. With this two wrap, um, you can see on this one, the way it lines up, so let's take a look at the, the length of these sections, right? This little section here, it's a little bit easier to see, is about an inch and a half, okay? So let me wrap it up. Will it fit around my, see it doesn't quite fit around my wrist. Can you see? It's a little short on my wrist. Oh. All right, Dawn. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Let me know. Let me know if it's if it's possible. Love it. So here I'm going to wrap this around twice and let's see how these line up. Now the transition in the bracelet, see how all of these, since they're all about the same length, how this length, how these sections line up, the wide sections, and then the the, the cinching in or the transition sections kind of line up. Now, that's fine. If you like everything to line up, more power to you, right? But if you don't want them to line up, you could alternate and just start this one and make it like a half an inch, pull it in, right? And then make that one an inch. Then you could do the inch all the way along and they would stagger instead of line up. But you decide what works for you. Let's take a look at something else with some other transitions. Let me see if I can get um, a larger strand or a, a longer bracelet. This one is a five stitch and we made this to commemorate uh, one of our former bead shop workers, Nicole, who was instrumental in the five stitch. So it has a bunch of different stitches here. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up and see. Like this, two, three, four, five. I think this is going to be like a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I want you to also notice how the closure on this to make it adjustable there are two loops, one here and one here. I'm going to put it on this final loop, and then let's take a look at how this one shakes out. Okay. So, yes, our buddy Nicole Anderson, she passed away. She was kind of in between the times that I was here at Bead Shop, but she certainly let, left her imprint. She loved wrap bracelets. Um, she loved making samples. Um, and so this was one of the tributes to Nicole uh, that we um, put together. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six wraps. And can you see how all of the pattern here is staggered, right? Nothing really lines up. Um, it's all kind of staggered here. So let me unwrap this and let's see how these wraps shake out. First, I'm going to try this on my wrist. I think it'll be a little small for me, 
Okay. And the three corner diamonds, that is the one that I'm wearing right here on this um, wrap. Um, thanks, Carrie, for pointing that out right here. Um, these do make good transitional sections in your bead, uh, in your wraps, because the whole size is three millimeter. So you can get two 1.5 millimeter strands through these. This is in that um, the last TGBE wrap bracelet I made, but we do carry these just as strands right here. Um, and here is the five stitch project. Um, thank you. Uh, Janice for doing that. And Margaret is saying, I started macrame bracelets with her five stitch wrap design. Took me so many rewinds, but I felt such triumph when, um, when you finished. We need to revisit this five stitch because it is fun. We call it five stitch because it has five different stitches in here. So let me see how this goes up on my wrist. Okay. Two, three, four, Yeah, I think this is going to be, this one is a little too wee for me. Can you see that? It doesn't quite go all the way around. I bet this would fit UJP for sure. So see, we're real, we're real close. See where that comes? And can you see how since these are five, uh, it's actually six wraps, <coughs> pardon me, right here. I would have to elongate this a little bit. Let me measure so we can see it um, and see how this looks. Um, I could, if I undo it and just make it five wraps, I think it's going to be a little bit too big. Okay, so here's five. And five actually, it's a touch big. See how five sits on me? And I can get more than a fingertip underneath here, right? I can get like almost like this much here. So it's a little bit too big. Let me measure this though. Let's take a look um, and see. There's our buddy Cynthia from Green Girl. Cynthia and I and Janice are cooking up so much great stuff for our retreat that's coming up. Cynthia, I can't wait to see you in person. We have used some of Cynthia's pieces in our wrap bracelets. We've used that azalea link um, for the center and worked out from the middle there. You can check that one out. Um, we have a lot of fun things uh, using uh, Cynthia's pieces. And Janice put up our um, Remembering Nicole page. You can kind of see how that how that goes. Yep, Cynthia, so what I'm talking about here, you may have missed the very, very beginning, but go back and watch the beginning and we can make these, or you can make this at home. But I made a mandrel that uh, out of some um, cardstock that is for my wrist. Um, and uh, I'll come in and I will uh, practice with my wraps here. Um, that's what I do here like this and it helps um okay so with these wraps these are kind of random in length we've started with this herringbone let me measure this out so see that's about four and then this next one here is a little it's about four and a half right and this one is about three and a half. So the more that you make these sections in your longer wraps kind of random, the more that the loop or that the, the wrap is going to be staggered in its design. Okay. So as I wrap it with my six, you can see again, how all of these kind of stagger to wrap. Okay. Uh, Cynthia, you're getting a lot of love for Green Girl on here, which I love. I love that. I can't wait till you come. We're going to have such a good time um, when you come in August and at the retreat. 
let me go ahead. I'm going to pull out some others that have some mixed media that are a little bit longer that we can uh, play with here. Let me show you this. This is an old one. I think our Karen did this a while back. I either made it or Karen made it. I'm not sure, but it has a lot of interesting techniques in it. Let's first check this around my bracelet gauge and see um, what we've got here. Oh, I love it. Azalea and I have been talking about what we want to show on the retreat. We have so many ideas. I know I'm super excited. And friends, our bead retreat is sold out uh, for this year. But if you do want to be on our waiting list, um, we've already had one person um, cancel, unfortunately. Um, but you can join us. Uh, just get right on our waiting list. Um, because usually we have a couple of spots open up. So see here, this, it, again, it's a little, <laughs> yeah, my mom is saying this one would fit me. This one's a little small. Okay. So my six and a half wrist, you can see again, I would make it just a little bit longer to fit me right here. Yeah. It has pink and gray for sure. So it is possible that it was our Karen, right? Um, and my mom is saying that it would fit her. Well, ma, come over and try everything on, right? But you can see with this, you can see kind of how everything is not lining up, which I love, like the transitions and things aren't really lining up here. So let's take a look at the different sections in here and about how they transition between one to another. Again, some of this has tiara cast things that we no longer carry but you can certainly substitute. So starting off with this quote unquote Bollywood style um, uh, wrap, this is a great one. And the transition here is our home run transition bead that we do still carry. That is a really fun one to use. Let me get this here a little bit closer. And then our second wrap here comes in and you can see we've done some of the uh, Checkmates tiles um, and it transitions with just a silk wrap and using um, here like this um, uh, with these, um, I think they're called small mini loops, something. We still carry these guys. Okay, like this. And then we go here. These are some small melon beads. Again, we don't carry, but you could use something that's a three or four millimeter. That transition again is a um, is a silk wrap. And what Karen did here, and she used the, I think this is the sage, the Greek leather and sage, or maybe um, it might just be the gray. Can you see how she floated just some six aughts on these? It's kind of Tahoe-esque, our Tahoe sample, right? Um, and then we come in, again, it transitions to a silk wrap. And then we come into some six millimeter rounds and it's finished off with a silk wrap. So the silk wraps here, my friends, are a great way to use the transitions uh, in between. And you can see here... Again, let me just measure some of these. Again, the length is kind of random. So this length here is about six and a half. Let's take a look at this one. This one's about six. So when you stagger all of these, yes, the Nun Mini Hoop, thank you, uh, Kim. It is one of my faves. It is a good stash at all times, uh, to have in your stash at all times. Um, this little Tahoe section, this one's a little bit longer, also a great place to put a, a, a charm. So again, if your sections are staggered, when you do your wrap, that wrap is also going to be staggered so things don't line up so much. Okay, uh, let's get another one out. I've just really tapped the surface uh, of these, and then we're going to take a look at um, some more length here. This is one, um, I'm not even sure. I want to find one that 
really oh here's one that i made so i know it'll fit me uh this is based off of janice's tricks of the trade here um it actually uses one of my buttons that i made i think i made this one on an episode for beads wobbles and jewels i think it was but the way that i transitioned this one okay this has a large shadow bead and what i did let, let's wrap it around the 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 cape bead the cape mandrel in hopes that it will fit and this has an epic amount of wraps and so we can start talking about the length that you need for wraps and see we can really see how how this fits around here and it's a little I'm going to try it on my wrist um, I may want to double check and make sure I know that this is six and a half but it might be also a little bit bigger but this is a good bracelet um, so this is the one I believe I did do this on beads bubbles and jewels I think but see how the way it wraps, how none of these transitioning beads, they line up a little bit over here, but not so much. Um, you can see, though, how they really all come together. Let me see if this paper doesn't yield. So it's close, it's close fitting. So I bet it'll fit on my wrist. Um, I used the Tyla beads here. I used some, these are 11 knots that are done here, right? Um, so let me wrap this and see if it wraps around my wrist. Yeah, my, uh, my wrist has gotten a little bit bigger. You never know, but let me start with wrapping. And as someone observed earlier, the longer that your bracelet is, the bigger it's going to have to be, right? So I might even think about making yourself your own little wrap bracelet journal or page or something like that so that you can take some notes on your yeah see it's not this one doesn't quite fit me anymore <laughs> right that's tiresome i'm going to pull it a little tight if i were wearing this um and i were wearing it as an everyday bracelet it does need to be about, see, I can't get, see that fingertip, how that doesn't quite fit. Yes, it is. Thank you, Dawn. It is the deco bracelet. And it was inspired by a painting, one of my favorite paintings in the SF MoMA. Uh, it's there. So, yep. Uh, it is true. As we gain more experience, we gain a few pounds. It is true. And yes, someone get me some chain, but it is just slightly too big. I mean, too small for me right now. That's okay. Um, Terry, that's a really great question. Uh, if my bracelet should shrink, <laughs> can you add on to it to make it longer once it's complete? You can. And you know, as uh, we're going to discuss closures on a future show, it's going to be all about closures. We've got a brand new kind of fun closure um, that we're going to be launching um, that would be perfect to kind of remake. Um, and I'll also revisit it, revisit that question when we do our closure show, because it's a complete legit one to do to create an extender. So let me take this one off and let's measure it, right? So it's a little tight for me. It would fit Janice. So if my wrist is six inches or six and a half inches, this would fit, I think, a six inch wrist. Okay. So let me go ahead and um, get in here, undo it, and let's measure. For a quick answer to that question, I could come back in. I could silk wrap another piece of leather right on here. Sorry, I'm out of focus. Silk wrap uh, another piece of leather right there on the end um, and attach, you know, keep going 
here, making it a little bit longer. Uh, we could put a chain, we could connect a chain. So we could stop here, we could unknot this, maybe silk wrap a loop or something like this silk wrap uh, a chain or another length of letter leather or something like this okay so this here i do love this bracelet too thank you so much for the love on this um this is that same uh little hex bead that jp used in her latest wrap let me get it here so you can see this is the matte silver one. This is the shiny. Sorry, I'm out of. I'm out of this here. Um, here, uh, I've used it. That's just a single wrap. And then it transitions with a large shadow. And then it goes to the um, bugle bead and the tila and the 10, the 11 knot metal bead. Again, metal beads, remember, on sale today only. This one is a little over, this is about six and three quarters, this length here. And uh, Sherry, that was a great question I saw here. Is a, if a wrap bracelet is too big, do you have to take it apart to start over? Nope, not at all. I would just do as Carrie says, and you could add just one more wrap or chain to compensate. I would never take it apart. I would never go backwards. I would always go forwards for this, okay? All of our wrap bracelets, um, you can just go right, you'll find all of the color study right here, right? You can find all of these here. This is based on Janice's color study. This one is all uh, 11 knots. And the transition again is that large shadow. And I use that throughout here. Uh, a bit of chain that was laddered. We did that on um, a previous broadcast. And you can see here when I started, I intentionally sometimes I do that. I start with a shorter than usual um, wrap section so that when it starts to wrap around my wrist, see how the transition is almost exactly on the other side of the button so that when it comes around, then the, the stack of the transitional object, whatever it is, silk wrap, bead, whatever, it doesn't start, it doesn't all line up together. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, okay, let's take a look at another large one. Oh, and let me give you a final door-to-door -door measurement on this. Okay, if I go here from the button shank, all the way down to where the button would go in, that's 47, like this, okay? So if it's a, how many wraps? I'll tell you. One, two, three, four, five, six. divided by six wraps. That's about seven and three quarters. Each wrap is about seven and three quarters. Okay, if I took that 47 divided it by six, I get 7.833. I'm gonna round it to, um, to about seven and three quarters. Now, since this has so many wraps, this is the example of that it's so many wraps here, right? That I would have to add a bit more length. I would need this to go, let's say if that were 47, let me go 49 divided by six. Yeah, I might make each of these wraps a little closer to eight as I get more, right? As as the wraps become uh, um more and more around the wrist, right? This two wrap one, even it, though it had larger beads, right? Uh, it, the, the seven inch should be fine. But here, as we get bulkier and bulkier, as the wraps get more and more, you're gonna have to add some length. Um, so take that total length, you know, like if you have a wrap bracelet that really fits you and it has multiple wraps, 
wrap it around, divide that length by the number of wraps, and that'll give you a, a good place, um, a good guideline to start. Like this one here, let me show you this. This is one that I did for the Great Bead Extravaganza. This double also doubles also as a necklace, but I started it out as being a wrap. Let me see if this one fits. I'm going to wrap this around. This is a little bit different. This was kind of a mixture of that Bollywood technique, um, the uh, the flat um, leather, you know, the the macrame flat knot. Let me see if I can get this in here. And it is definitely, well, you can see, I'm not going to close it because I'm just going to take it back on. Okay, so see here how this is one, two, one, two, three, four wraps. Can you see that there? These beads are pretty bulky. Okay, so I'm, let me measure this. I'm going to divide it by four and let's see. Thank you. Kim, I don't know how you folks remember all of these names. This one is the beach glass wrap. Um, I had kitted it, but you can also make something very similar. We carry a lot of these types of beads, a lot of the African glass. Um, let me measure this and let's see. Dawn is asking, what are the dates for the next great bead extravaganza? Um, the schedule is up. Uh, we'll start sharing it in the newsletter. The next great bead extravaganza, the preview is the 19th of April, so just a couple of weeks away. My um, presentation is on the 20th, that Saturday, and I have the honor of hosting our buddy Lisa Niven Kelly from Beejucation. Her segment is going to be on Sunday, so that's uh, that's what's that's what's happening. So you can see door to door, I'm going to say just for ease, it's about 31. It's actually about 31.5. So 31, 31.5 inches divided by four is about seven and three quarters, each of these lengths. Okay. Each of these wraps about seven and three quarters for a four wrap. And again, these beads are pretty bulky. Can you see that side view? Okay. So it's definitely an example, right? As you say, Margaret, that the large girth beads affect the measurement. Definitely. Okay. Um, let me get a couple more. We're almost out of time. We could talk about this subject all day. But I hope that you found some of this really helpful. Let me get a few more that are really kind of long because I think it's the long bracelets that really um, start to give people the grief or the, you know, here's another. This is one that Janice, I think Janice, you did that one. Um, that's one I think that Janice and I taught way back in the day at Beat and Button. Let me see if I can find a couple more here. Just bear with me while I do that. Also, let me pull something like this out. These are This one is smaller. Let's take a look at this one, actually. This one just has ADOTs and Tylas. Very similar um, in feel. Not very similar, but it has that same sleek feel that Janice's latest wrap that I just had here two seconds ago um, has. Now I have this huge pile of wrap bracelets in front of me. Did it fall on the floor? It did, no. Yes, it did. When in doubt, look on the floor. These bracelets, when you use a lot of Tylas, these Checkmates Tylas, right? They're pretty skinny. So they don't have a lot of width to them. So something like this, this has the Tylas and just an ADOT with a small button. Let me wrap it and see what fits. Okay. 
So there we go. Something like this. This is a four wrap. This is a perfect fit for me. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I can get my finger underneath one, two, three, four wraps. They're nice and flat. It fits really nicely. And this, it doesn't have any transitions in between, kind of like what Janice did. She kind of narrowed and narrowed her piece in width, but this just doesn't have any transitional beads it's at all. It's just flat. I really like the look of this very, very much. Um, and this is, Deborah. this is a good, this might be a little too much math for me <laughs> this morning, but add half of the diameter of the largest beads, multiply the number of beads that there are, and it will just ease the length long enough. That's a great tip. Let me go ahead and measure this one. Okay. Let's see if it fits around my, <clears throat> my wrist mandrel. And this will also kind of allow you to see, yeah, see how nicely. This will also kind of allow you to see how everything lines up. This is the Greek leather here that is on this wrap, right? Um, the Greek leather, I think, looks so nice on wraps. We carry the Greek in some different colors. There you go. That's a little bit clearer. Um, it's a little bit of a different quality than the, um, than the Indian leather and perhaps a little bit more consistent in size. Okay, let me go ahead. I'm going to measure this one door to door so we can look at a measure, a measurement. Yeah, it's a nice place to put a little charm on the end. I think we still have these charms available. So when I say door to door measurement, what I mean is that I go right where the button shank, right where that attaches. And let me go from this side so my measuring isn't upside down right there. And I'm just going to go all the way down. And then I'm going to go right here, 29 inches, right where the button sits. And again, Shelly, we don't have a kit for this one. JP, I think this is under mosaic wrap. All you need, Shelly, for a piece like this would be a tube of ADOT beads, a couple of Tyla beads in colors that you like. And if you're using the Greek leather, one package of Greek leather um, and a button, that's it really. It's the ADOTs, one tube, and the Tylas, as many tubes as you like colors. Um, and then just this KO here. Um, if you look under mosaic wrap, um, there's always an ingredients list and then a recipe that you can substitute um, your own. Uh, Tylas. Did I say tiles? They are Miyuki tiles. Tyla beads. That's what these are. Okay. They're nice and flat. Um, so 29. Let me do that. I can't do the division in my head. 29 inches divided by four wraps. That makes it about seven and a quarter. Yeah. And it's just maybe like a hair too long. So I think um, each wrap at about seven inches would be okay. Okay. But again, the more that you kind of experiment with this and the more you kind of like measure the wraps that you already have and make some notes, it's going to be uh, a little bit easier. Um, here's one with the Checkmates tiles. Um, this is really similar in design. Again, no, um, uh, no transitional beads, but you can see the Checkmates tiles, how they're a little bit wider. Okay, uh, let me put this one on and see how it wraps around. This is kind of a nice monochromatic piece. And you can see that, yes, this one is fitting me. Okay, let me get this on. 
This bracelet, for some reason, it has a little bit of a warp to it, but it's okay. So see, this one, again, I can get my, my finger way under there. That's my finger test, right? Um, and again, that's a four. So let me measure this because this is with the Checkmates tiles. We've got a good question here from Jezebel Designs. I'm going to put that up in just a second. Let me see if I can get this off my wrist, though, and let's measure it. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to come in with the button, and I'm going to measure it all the way down, all the way down. And see, again, this has a little bit, this isn't the best one to measure because it has a little bit of a warp. Um, I think if it weren't so warped, it would come in, again, at about that 29 inches. So this isn't, this isn't the best, okay, um, for that. But uh, let's go back to your question here. How would you size a wrap bracelet? um for sale i always struggle with a good typical size um i know you can't fit everyone but i'm having trouble finding a good average what i would do for bracelets that you're going to sell two things and janice also answered it down there but that one that i showed um this one here this five stitch we put two loops on the end, okay? So I come in, you could knot or macrame, come in with this first one, this loop. I don't know why that's funny there. I'm gonna see if I can untie this and even it out. Um, but you can, at the end, simply tie your knot, make sure it fits your first button here, let me, let me do this here. And then tie a second one so it fits the second button, you know, so the button fits in the second loop as well. Then when you sell your piece, if this first loop fits, you can cut that second loop away. That's something I see a lot of make it a little bit nicer so this is even. Yeah, there we go. And let's make sure it fits in that button, which it does. And then I'll come in and we'll retie that last one. It's easier to do when you have a longer tail, but there it is. Does that make sense? And let me come in with my flat plier. And I think this way, they'll all be finished. I mean, this is definitely what I would do. They'll all be finished. And if they need to use this one, great. They can use it. Or if not, you can just clip this one away and it'll be finished like this. You could also, if you wanted, if they are going to use this last one and not this one, you could add a little charm that floats in this second buttonhole, right? That would also work. Um, in the closures, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some um, uh, adjustable closures, right? But you could, um, uh, you know, make everything so it's adjustable with the chain. But I really like these little loops like this. Okay. Um, this is a good comment. You've left some of yours unfinished so you can size to fit, but they didn't sell very well, right? Because they weren't finished. So, right. I would get that. Um, what did Janice say earlier? Um, here's Janice's tip on that. Chan Lu makes her five wrap bracelets with two loops. Oh, Janice said that there between 32 and 34 inches. So, um, Erica is saying, I've noticed that the tighter I ladder and the stiffer the bracelet, the longer it needs to be. That's for sure. I would say, um, honestly, 
Um, oh, and this is a good one here. Something so to use elastic at the end. Um, so that elastic kind of stretches longer or shorter using a ponytail end. That's an interesting uh, technique or idea. Um, yeah. And the closure episode, Nancy, every, uh, there's two more episodes. This is episode four. Episode five is going to be on May 1st. And then the last wrap up episode will be on June 1st. Master classes are always the first Wednesday of the month. Okay. I hope that, I hope that helps. Let me take this off. Let me get like this. Let me put up, uh, friends, the, um, our special that we've got today only for those of you who are watching our live, who are watching on live replay today. We've talked a lot about metal beads and those transitions and everything. All metal beads today, my friends, are 30% off uh, on beadshop.com. Today is the day to grab them if you love them. Um, and that discount expires tonight at midnight Pacific time, just to enter coupon code metal beads 30 in the discount code, uh, in the discount box. And you'll get, uh, you'll get that discount. Um, I also, Janice is saying we're going to post a project next month with a chain extender. It's going to be really fun. We've got those new, like I mentioned earlier, those new little, uh, connectors that I think you're going to love. Um, let me also remind you then we did had some really great ideas today. If I do say so myself on items that we have created for you to help you measure, make yourself a wrist mandrel using some, um, I used a manila folder, but you can use any kind of cardboard stock that you have. And don't forget this fun tip from Janice, her little accordion measurer, uh, and I just added some some um, uh, measurements, some written measurements on there. Uh, Janice, I had fun too today. I love wrap bracelets. Janice is planning one for March, uh, for, I'm sorry, May. It's going to be her birthday, uh, bracelet that she's creating. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. That one's going to be a free tip Friday on May 10th. So mark your calendars from that, uh, for that. Um, I hope this is helpful to all of you folks. We really just did a lot of chatting today and not a lot of like rap demoing, but don't forget my friends to go over to, um, our, um, uh, our YouTube channel. You can find the masterclass, the first three episodes now, plus this one over on our masterclass playlist. We're going to do a fresh masterclass the end, the last six months of the year. I'm still deciding on what it is. So if you have any ideas, toss them my way. Um, but there's still two more episodes remaining of this one, uh, here of our wrap bracelet masterclass. Uh, let's take a look and make sure uh, what we've got here. Good. Okay. Well, my friends, thank you again so, so much for joining me today and sharing your ideas on all of this masterclass wrap bracelet business. I'm going to be back with you on Friday. We've got a new, uh, really wonderful dangle that we're going to be, uh, launching. I'm going to talk a little bit about antiquing the metal with one of my favorite antiquing techniques. Um, and we're going to play around with it. Okay. So I will see you and thank you Stamili for reminding everyone. Don't forget to hit that like share notification, all of that stuff, the more social shares and the more likes and engagement that we get for our social media posts, the more that algorithm sends them out, uh, for more people to find it. And my friends, without you, our loyal bead shop customers, old and new, if you're just watching us for the first time, we really, really appreciate you and welcome. If you are an old school bead shop watcher, thank you for your loyalty and your customer commitment to us. Uh, we honestly, our small, very small woman led woman owned business would not be able to survive without you folks out there. So thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. And I'll see you all on Friday. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.